Hi, I'm glad you could join me. Today I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now most of us know 1 Corinthians 15 as being the chapter that speaks so highly of the resurrection. It is one of the, one of the high points of the New Testament. And, and while that is a very, very significant doctrine, my focus today is going to be on verses 3 and 4 of this particular passage. Because here Paul lays out what the essence of the gospel is. Now he uses that to spring into his conversation and his discussion of the resurrection. But nevertheless, in verses 3 and 4, he says, I receive from the Lord what I deliver to you, that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, that he was buried, and that he arose again according to the scripture. Now, Paul says in that passage that this is of first importance. This is the essence of the gospel. Now, I know that every denomination and every sect of Christianity has their own version and their own way of looking at that. And, and so this particular passage for me has always given me the ingredients of what true faith is. Now, I don't know about you, but I like ice cream. But there is a confection that is uh, made today that is intended to look like ice cream, to taste like ice cream, to give you all the satisfaction of ice cream, but it's not real ice cream. It's yogurt. Now, as a confection, frozen yogurt is great. Uh, if you like frozen yogurt as opposed to ice cream, I'm not being critical that way. But for the purposes of my illustration, what I want you to understand is that the ingredients that make real ice cream are not the same as the ingredients of frozen yogurt. And within the ecclesiastical community, within the larger church, if you wish to use that word, there are the frozen yogurt varieties. So what are the real ingredients that make true faith and what are the ingredients that, uh, or, or that are lacking that make the frozen yogurt variety of Christianity? You understand what I'm meaning. Well, in this particular passage, Paul says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now, historically, the church has understood this to mean that he died as our substitute, that he died in our place, and for our sins. A place that you would turn to get this idea is Isaiah 53, where, where, where the, the writer, uh, where Isaiah writes that uh, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And one of, one of the things that I instruct people to do in my congregation whenever we read that passage is that I ask them to emphasize the pronouns. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And by emphasizing those pronouns, you get the idea of substitution coming through very, very clearly. And you can do that throughout that passage. A second ingredient there is the resurrection, the bodily resurrection of Jesus. In fact, in that particular passage, he's not talking about a resurrection like the flowers that are perennial bloom in the springtime. But rather instead, he's talking about the physical rising from the dead of Jesus. You don't bury a spirit, but that passage says that he was buried and that he arose from the grave. We believe in the bodily resurrection of Jesus. And twice in that passage, he says, according to the scriptures. So in, this, in these two short verses, we have the three essential ingredients for true Christianity. And you can have all kinds of different flavors. You could have a charismatic flavor. You can have a liturgical flavor. You can have historical flavors. You can have all kinds of different flavors. But they have to have these three things in order to be the true element. 
the bodily, uh, the, the substitutionary atonement, the bodily resurrection, and the authority of Scripture. And if those three are there, you've got the real deal. Even if they cross their T's and dot their I's differently than you do, even if they wave their hands and you don't, or even if they don't wave their hands and you do, whatever it may be, as long as those three elements are there, the substitutionary atonement, the bodily resurrection, and the authority of Scripture. And one of the things that I've noticed as I've gone through life has been that those that seem to uh, hedge on any one of those three things, if you look deeply into their doctrines, you're going to find that they're going to hedge on the others as well. And I could go into some of the cults that do that, but we don't have time right now. The bottom line, what to look for? Substitutionary atonement, the bodily resurrection, and the authority of Scripture. And if those three are present, then you've got real ice cream. Father, we thank you for uh, guiding us. We thank you for providing for us. As people move around, we know they look for different ministries at times as they relocate, but uh, I pray that you would guide the church to find the real deal and use this message to encourage them in that way. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day now.